outro cast. Larry, um, Alex, Alex, Larry, well, pleasure to be speaking with both of you. So two-parter goes to Larry first. How are you? And how did you know that Alex was the person to help carry this film? Uh, thanks for asking. And I love your background. It's very cozy. Um, Thank you. So, um, well, I was fortunate enough. Uh, my son went through a long process of um, auditioning actors for a film he was making some years ago. And uh, he, uh, he met Alex and uh, cast him in his film, Foxhole, a war film. And I was the producer on that. So um, I ended up hanging out with a lot of the actors. Uh, and uh, Alex and I struck up a rapport because I learned that he really was influenced by the old uh, Universal films. Um, and I think you know that Alex is also the son of William Hurt, so there was sort of an interesting conversation about that legacy and having a very obviously powerful, prominent father and and all those sort of contours. And um, the the combination and just hanging out with him and, and jiving with him, I, I felt like maybe I found my werewolf. Now, the point is, is that I've always wanted to make a werewolf movie. Mm -hmm sort of working on it I've, I've workshopped it i've played the character myself on a radio play the exact same character so uh it was always top of mind that that was going to be my next film and uh i in a way meeting alex chatting with him and the rapport uh, made me know that now i'm ready to go got it is, you know, the character you're looking for a psychological realism uh, in these kind of updated horror stories Right. Well, Alex, going through your credits and of course, beyond acting, you've done some production and writing work besides that. But in terms of acting, are you specifically drawn to the horror genre or is it just the right role is the right role? Uh, well, I love horror. I think I really do think that um, there's no other genre in which film is able to express allegory as clearly and viscerally uh but as, as as an artist i'm drawn to character and relationship and depth and weight of those two things and the way in which a story can actually impact an audience member because that's what it did to me like i remember watching karloff the first time when i was five and being like, he's the most human person in this world. <laughs> and that I connect to that. And that makes me feel seen and understood. And I remember the first time I saw Into the Woods on Broadway. And I went backstage afterwards. And I said, where's the rest of the giant? And they said, that's it. That's all there is. We, And I was like, but I thought that, that there was a real giant. How did you do that? <laughs> Um, and and those are the reasons I I wanted to become an actor. And then you know I I think I you know I was a sixteen year old stoned teenager doing a play and thinking like this is the most camaraderie and collaboration that I've ever been a part of. And I I played organized sports and I had been forced to do ballet as a child and uh, by my mother and uh, and. And it was the first time I was like, oh, this is something, you know, when people ask me what I wanted to do when I grew up, I, I said, I just want to be a friend. Like, I just enjoy relationship. That was the thing that was it, humans were interesting to me. I didn't know how the heck I was going to make money being a friend. Uh, so, you know, I, you know, well, there is a like, oh, this, role for that. <laughs> yeah. there, I was like, there's there's a play, you know, I, I was doing a play and I was like, this is it. Um, and I thought because of, um, of my father that it was possible mm -hmm. uh and i remember having a conversation with him when i sort of had decided oh this is what i'm gonna do in my life he was like please don't do this <laughs> the worst decision you could ever make um you have no idea what you're getting yourself into uh and i very naively was like nah you know what you're talking about um and uh and you know but i i am grateful that, that this is what i do and so yeah i guess to answer your question I, I love horror. Uh, I am not drawn only to horror. I'm I'm drawn to character, and uh, and this character represented a, a great challenge. And I, I you know desperately wanted to do it. Well, throwing it back to Larry here, 
Larry is just a very calm person. Let's forget about what he creates and puts on screen. When you see Larry in interviews, very relaxed. And I find that that's common for the horror genre where the darkest themes imaginable are on screen and the people get it out that way so that in everyday life, they're regular, normal people, almost like metal people. Larry, were you always this calm or did you mellow out with age? Well, it's just funny. You can see Alex is going, wait, I'm not quite sure what he's saying because I'm, I'm actually a fairly uh, extremely impatient, overbearing, uh, nervous Nelly. But I, I, perhaps the calm you're talking about is I try to project a sense of camaraderie even with a, a viewer because I'm sort of saying we're all suffering together uh, and you know you're speaking of horror fans you know when I go to horror conventions or horror uh, film festivals I find that horror people are the sweetest people because yeah. they they seem to have tapped into the dark side they're aware that that is an everyday concern uh, you know, sudden death, uh, serial killers, uh, the violent uh, encounters. And uh, and so they, I, I believe they actually are tapped into a slightly different existential reality than maybe the average um, even film go. So uh, I, I have a great reverence for the people who associate with the horror genre. Uh, I, I do have to correct you though. I don't think any of my friends would say I'm very calm. They would say I'm... Uh, hyped up and uh, overbearing and um, I would say I would say, he, I would say he's a New Yorker <laughs> yeah. he's a New Yorker that's right yeah okay let me rephrase it when you're an interviewer talking to film professionals and actors and all that you sometimes yeah. get this list of demands of you can talk about this you can't do this don't reference this etc with Larry there's no demands he oh, smiles yeah. naturally and uh he just gives off a nice relaxed persona can we agree on that one i appreciate the the so-called adjustment to your question what i really want to say is i feel very strongly that uh the role of the arts and also the artist is to access vulnerability and to um in a way to make people feel, I mean, I really don't like this new expression, but to feel seen, you know, it's to be inclusive and to, you know, you really haven't done anything if you haven't uh, exposed yourself because that's what you're offering. And, you know, that can happen in an abstract painting or or a, a, a deep dive in a, in a documentary. But the point is, is there something that is the offering that is where the, there's untold value something hollywood can't pay for is um an offering of oneself and one's vulnerability which is to sort of say i want to include you um in my suffering and therefore make you find solace so in that regard i mean the calm you're speaking of is maybe the fact that you feel you can trust um the the, the messenger in this case that mm -hmm. i'm i'm there to share with you in some way even at my own detriment because you know everybody knows i hate flying for example i'm basically saying yeah i'm a scaredy cat i i i, I want to share that with people because i'm not trying to posture uh that i'm going to um overwhelm you with uh prowess and ego uh, so that is actually in a way my my particular angle on the arts is to yeah what, <laughs> See, I'm so vulnerable now. I just feel terrible. Oh my God. He's been fun. I, I, I caused a breakdown. Well, I, I want to throw a two parter at both of you, Alex, first, before I let you go, because you've been kind with your time today. And what kind of horror interview is this? Or a couple of old. Uh, anyway. The, the kind of interview that goes, these people make art that matters. So let's show them in a positive light. That kind there of you go, my brother. Okay. I love it. <laughs> so, so the two part of that first goes to Alex. Uh, where can we see you next? Because let's face it, this is a new, this modern day werewolf classic thriller is new to us. It's old to you because you already made it and you've now seen it a bunch of times at screenings and you're doing press, et cetera. So where can we see you next? And then the second part is, what do you do to decompress after making such intense art? Okay, uh, great questions. Uh, thank you. Um, so right now I'm doing a play on Broadway called Patriots. Uh, it's a transfer, actually. It was done in London last year, and it's about 
the oligarch who essentially put Putin in power. Um, and, uh, and it's with Michael Stuhlbarg, Will Keane, a couple other, I mean, not a couple, like an 18 person cast and full of just fantastic, talented, skilled actors. And, uh, and the team is incredible. Ruby Gould is directing it. And uh, so that that's the next, pro that's the project I'm working on now. Uh, there's a film called Test Screening, which should be coming out in the next year. It's a horror thriller. Uh, it takes place in the 1980s, and uh, it, it's about a small town that the government is running an, an operation on uh, to to test out a alien uh, substance that they don't. It, it's very very much inspired. You know, honestly, the movie it reminds me of is um, you know the 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 the, the film Possession. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, yeah. It, it, there, there's a lot of similar allegorical themes in there, or it's like a mashup of the, like it feels like that, but it's more the thing, you know. Uh, and yeah, so that that'll be out soon. And then I think there's a, a action movie I did with John Travolta called Cash Out right. that should be coming out soon, <laughs> right? Where I play a, a very similar type of person to uh, in the usual suspects you know that the lawyer it's, it's, my, my character's name is mr flowers uh so that 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 should be coming out soon um besides that i i i, I don't know yeah i'm producing a film right now we're trying to get that done in uh hopefully in september i'm really excited about that film and, and it mostly deals with uh it, it was, the director's calling it a spiritual thriller and it's a, a woman, a couple uh, having their second child. And she, it really deals with a lot of things about uh, postpartum depression because the director and I have a great deal of respect for the women who have decided to have babies with us and, and think that they, and their experience has not been seen captured on, on film as of yet. And we would like to, to explore that. So yeah, that's, those are, that's what's going on for me right now. Uh, and then decompress. Uh, I, I don't decompress. Uh, I, I have two kids. So as soon as I'm done doing like the work is the vacation for me. Um, you know, I, I once heard an interview of an actor talking about working with Scorsese and saying like, Oh, I went on a road trip afterwards. I had to decompress after that. Uh, you know, and I'm just like, that's the vacation, man. What are you talking about? That, like, that was the seven weeks I was hanging out with this guy that was that was that was the vacation that was the i mean that that experience was the gift um and then you know getting to go home and change diapers and sleep two hours a night that's that's the other gift you know and that's the probably that's definitely for me the more valuable gift um but 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 you know my identity is wrapped up in in the feeling that stories can ha affect change and be really useful to our world and they've been useful to me um and then yeah but but i i really do like my kids a lot they're pretty cool i mean they're they're you know they're terrors but... for now they're terrors later they'll be taking care of you so fingers crossed and larry the, the we'll final words at you there what's next because sometimes you're the actor sometimes director writer producer cinematographer editor you kind of do it all different project to project so what's next and how does the nervous nelly himself decompress uh so i have about i think five or six movies that i've acted in of course sometimes just showing up for a day or something but uh, they're all kind of percolating i'll let the producers of those movies make their own announcements and then um i have a script for a new film which i'm looking forward to you know continuing to develop and then figure out a way to make it and oh and then uh, a film i produced and helped write is called crumb catcher and we're soon to announce its uh distribution deal and then that'll roll out i'm hoping in the summer so uh and then whatever else one does on the side. And uh, so that's my 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 deal. In, in terms of the decompression, though, that's the I'm just very curious about that, because what I said before about horror people, usually the, the, you'll find that they're golf people or they have something like that. Is there any downtime or is it in juggling the acting, writing, directing, et cetera? There is never downtime. And that's by choice. 
Well, I always uh, joke about this with my wife, who's an animator, and we have a lovely home. Uh, our kid is out of the house now. Uh, we work 24-7. Uh, I like to cook, so that's my break. And then we watch a movie, and then I go back to work. So and I is, don't really think He is think a master about, chef. There could be a documentary. That, shot, none shot of that's on. true. But it is true. Um, but the reality is, um, yes. I'm blessed to be yes. uh, uh, a working yes. artist, and um, so no, I don't really yearn for downtime. I'm literally the last guy you'll find on a beach, unless I'm making a, a Jaws sequel. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't even really like to travel unless it's school work, and then that happens. But uh, yeah, I'm actually a very boring person. I have no uh, interests outside of saving the world and uh, making scary movies. Yeah, I think burnout burnout happens for people whose jobs are jobs. Yeah, you know, I I, I, I don't I don't I don't find that my job is our job is not a, it's not a job. Yeah, there's no decompression. It, it, we work hard at it. We take it seriously. It is our profession. Um, he works insanely hard. He works harder than me, which is, that's saying something. Also, and, uh, I I would have to say, uh, I think the state of the world is such that one feels a certain urgency to contribute in some way to, I, I like what you had said earlier, stories do make a change, or that's the, the illusion we have to live with. Yeah. Um, I really don't think there's a lot of time to sort of uh, hang up your hat and kick back. We're in dire times, quite honestly. And I feel like every generation has felt that. But I think uh, uh, scientifically and historically, you can say uh, things are worse. And that's we know this because of technology and social media and um, the, the, the romance of lies is really a new uh, level of depravity from humanity. So there's a feeling that there's actually not a lot of leisure time. Um, if you might stop working, then maybe you should work for uh, Doctors Without Borders. There's a lot of problems. So I, I feel that commitment, maybe it's my upbringing, a sense of responsibility for the future. Even though I'm so lucky to be old, I can kick back, fade away, but I have a child. So I feel some responsibility. You've got young kids so there's I, that burden i feel like i'm on vacation right now i tell you this what. is a vacation this, this, thank this, you for this, uh, this, this yeah i feel totally like we're vacation. at your house we're drinking hot toddies uh on the on the porch uh or not hot toddies but uh mimosas 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 thank you uh so this has been the vacation thank you Thank you both for the great art. Thank you for your time. We're really looking forward to what's next from both of you, whether you're acting, producing, whatever it is. Thank you both. But first of all, can you show us your fucking shirt? What is that? Oh, Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, oh, right. oh. I mean, this whole time, it's all I've been wondering. All right, thanks. I thank mean, you. anticlimactic, but thank you so much, guys. Take care. Not at all. Not at all. Not Likewise. Outrocast.